So it is another nice day and I'm just about to head out and grab a couple things for the car but I wanted to make a quick video first because yesterday I fixed an issue that has been bugging me for a while and I've been chasing this for you know I, I've had a couple theories on what it was and you know like all things with this car it seems obvious now that I fixed it but uh, at the time uh, what was happening and I've, I've actually mentioned this on video too um, it felt like basically I, I would drive the car and everything was fine and then for whatever reason a few minutes into the drive the throttle just seemed like it wasn't responsive and I've had issues with the throttle body before but for some reason this seemed like maybe it was like a knock sensor or something with the fueling because one of the main things I look for on seeing how the car's running is I use the wideband. So normally when I'm running non-ethanol fuel, wide open throttle is roughly 11.3, 11 11.2 uh, to one air fuel. Stock I think is around 10.8, 10.9. Um, and for some reason this, you know, it would feel like it's down on power big time but it would also run at around 10.2, 10.5 to one air fuel, like really, really rich. You know, as cars are going from cable driven to uh, e-throttle, there was this kind of in-between phase where they had these kind of weird implementations of both. And this is one of those cars. Yeah, so basically our car has a electronically cable driven throttle body. So it's, you know, there is kind of two different things, but anyways, so the real reason I'm making this video is because I think a lot of you guys might be having this problem too. So let's go take a look at what I found because this, like I said, it was, it did not seem like a throttle body issue. This seemed more like timing or fueling and it just didn't really jump out to me right away. So when I first checked under here uh, and to preface this, when I deleted the cruise control, because my front sensor doesn't work, when I deleted all this, I actually did move this plate around. I did adjust this. So this has most likely been like this for well over a year. So before I tighten it up, it's all fixed now, but this cable was loose. It was literally slack in it. It was looped like that. So basically what was happening was as my as I'm leaning into the pedal, this is pulling up on nothing and not even moving the throttle body. And then when I do get to that spot, it feels like I'm already halfway into the pedal. So the car thinks, hey, I'm at 50% throttle, but realistically, I'm only at like five, 10% throttle. And that's where the issue came in. So uh, if you have one of these cars, just loosen this up and pull it so that there is no slack in this. You want it so that as soon as this opens, we're moving the throttle body. We want this to be opening at the slightest uh, pull on this cable. So take a little bit of synthetic grease or lithium grease, get it nice and uh, lubricated, and then tighten this up. You want this to have no slack. So basically, when this is tight and you start to lean into the throttle, you want this to start opening because the rest of the car sensors are going to work off of this input. So if your throttle is 10% off, then you might be 10% off in like other areas like shifting, right? Like all these other like weird little issues that I just thought were old car issues are now being resolved by this. So make sure your throttle, I might even tighten this up a little bit more to get like a really responsive uh, throttle, but yeah, it's the same idea as like a pedal commander, right? You hear people talking about pedal commanders. Well, that's basically just adjusting how far the throttle body moves to how much throttle, or sorry, how much pedal movement is there, right? So if you want your pedal to move 5%, but open this up 10%, then you would go in there and it would change, you know, the input signal uh, to be modified to that, to that, uh, to those numbers. But I uh, just thought that might be important. You know, I know a lot of people kind of forget about that these are still cable driven. Um, they are, so check that out. Okay, so this is about a couple hours after I recorded that little clip of the uh, throttle. And um, I actually further tightened it up to the point where it was actually too tight and then uh, backed off a little bit. So now it's just perfect. You can tell there's absolutely zero, zero play in that. And I also went ahead and just greased everything. So I use a synthetic grease 
Um, I kind of use it for everything just because I originally put, you know, white lithium on rubber and I vowed to never put a petroleum based grease on rubber again so I went with synthetic and I really like it it's you know kind of does everything so I just use synthetic grease on well literally everything all the metal components um, the actual cable and some of the rubber stuff too so nice and greased up nice and smooth okay so this came in the mail today and it is the evil energy one-way check valve and it's going to be replacing all of this and I'd actually kind of want to elaborate on what this all is because in the video where I do this um, I'm still learning about it and I'm actually kind of incorrect on a few things so now that I've you know gone down the rabbit hole uh, let me clarify a few things so the sock crankcase ventilation um, is on there's we have two valves so they're on each side they're on each valve cover rather and the manifold vacuum the it's quite a strong vacuum on this engine will pull vacuum on the crankcase the thing is is that that vacuum is only present at partial throttle or at idle as soon as you go wide open that vacuum becomes atmospheric pressure rather so <clears throat> you don't really get any uh, crankcase vacuum at wide open throttle but on the stock boot where this normally is the little breather that goes into it that will actually reverse the vacuum so normally the manifold is pulling vacuum right and it has an air source from the intake and has to be it from the intake because it has to be metered air which was originally why I put that little guy in there because I thought you could just have it anywhere so I quickly found out that that is not the case. It has to be basically in a stream of air. It has to be past the mass airflow. And what that does is it feeds cool air to the crankcase under partial throttle and at idle. And when you step on it, when you go wide open, the air going through your intake actually creates a Venturi vacuum. If you're not sure what that is, you can Google that. But basically as air rips past this hole, it actually reverses the flow in going that way. So you always get a crankcase vacuum, uh, no matter what part of the throttle you're in. And it's quite a well-designed intake. And when I realized that as a noob, I went to all this, ex uh, all this you know, crazy uh, fittings and all this stuff so that I could have vacuum at wide open throttle. And realistically, this is totally overkill. Um, when you go forced induction, this might actually be a pretty cool supporting mod. But for right now, it really doesn't do much. Uh, it probably helps the ring seal a little bit at wide open throttle. And you can actually feel it. Like it, actually, it actually does feel a little bit stronger when the uh, pump is running. But one of the main things that I did here, the reason why this is in here, and it's not just a straight tube, um, is because I wanted the, the, the idea that I could restrict the flow coming from here and I thought maybe we could increase vacuum and we can uh, we might get into that later down the road but realistically having it wide open it's just just a consistent stream of air is is the best for what it is right now and uh, the reason for that is because it's out um, if I close this off it will create more vacuum in the engine but it's harder on the pump and for what we're doing the amount of vacuum that I have and the fact that we're having increased cold air flowing through the oil is more of a benefit to me than having it a little bit extra vacuum and no cold air flow. So <clears throat> I'm going to leave this open, but what I realized when I took this all apart and I was cleaning up the throttle body and when I ported it is that with even with all this crazy stuff and with this little valve and all that, when I'm at wide open throttle, this actually does create a fair amount of venturi vacuum. And learning a bit more about this, you know, you know, talk about the late science class, but uh, yeah, it, the amount of air ripping through this intake will create vacuum on this line. And that's not what we want, right? I don't want anything to go in the intake. That's the, the whole point of this going in the pump and not the vacuum or not the manifold is so that we don't get anything in the intake. So um, realizing that, I wanted to do this and what this is going to do is we're going to have it facing this way so the arrow points to which way the flow will go 
and basically what happens is we're going to have a nice metered airstream and then when I go wide open throttle and if that Venturi vacuum is greater than the vacuum from our pump then it's actually going to reverse flow and I know that's true because I found tiny bits of oil on the corners so what this is going to do is it's going to feel that um, the vacuum is going to reverse and it's going to close so this is is we're gonna get rid of our ability to change vacuum level but we're gonna completely eliminate oil going in the intake now so <clears throat> you'll see these on the more mo uh, elaborate catch cans they'll do this on you know if you didn't do a vacuum pump and you were gonna buy an aftermarket catch can for this you would have to buy one of those dual catch cans because it has this metered airstream if it was just a regular PCV going into the intake or into the manifold then we could just put the catch can in line and it would catch all the crap no problem but because this has a metered airstream and it's a little bit more complex you would have to have two cans basically intercepting this and intercepting that so instead of buying a second can I was very broke at the time and you know instead of buying another $150 catch can and uh, <laughs> figuring out fittings for that I went down this route which is probably more expensive in the end but hey that's kind of what I do so the real reason I'm making this video is because as I was learning about this I just you know so many things changed and uh, you know to make to make a clear concise video on this stuff I kind of had to learn about it first so um, yeah so originally when I made this bong it was the wrong size bong because once I realized that the Venturi vacuum would actually reverse I thought that it would need a teardrop on the inside and so I went down the whole rabbit hole of external vacuum because I didn't want to not use this thing and you know come full circle I realized that no this actually probably would have worked as just regular Venturi vacuum like this probably makes a ton of Venturi vacuum actually um, and the way I know that is because we are seeing oil in the intake with you know without all of this stuff so um, yeah, I just want to make the video just because this has been a learning experience for me. Um, you know, I, I definitely didn't pay attention in science class, so doing a little bit of catch up here. So I think that this might be useful, you know, if you're making an aftermarket intake, uh, or a custom intake rather, for this car, and you don't want to do the whole vacuum pump and all this craziness, then yeah, you could just make a bung. Uh, and not have to worry about teardrop design or you know obviously that'll help but realistically as long as you have a breather in there something like this just you know a quick little tube going to the crankcase and th then yeah this will pull a vacuum this will create enough venturi at wide open that you're not creating excess pressure you know yeah it's still going in the intake it's not ideal but uh if you don't want to do the whole pump thing then yeah put this on your intake make a vis line and uh you're good to go so Let's take this off, let's put our check valve on there, and uh, let's see how it runs. Alright, so got this out of there, and originally I actually just wanted this valve, and I was going to take this out and just block that off, but uh, the secondary design for it was actually going to take this valve, or take this uh, gauge and replace it with a vacuum gauge, so we could kind of see how much vacuum it was pulling. I don't think that that pump is going to create enough to even make this thing budge. Anyways, yeah, you can see it right there. Let's see if we can get some little tiny bit of oil. Yeah, I can feel it. Very small. This is like oil vapors, right? But the only way they're going to get in there is if we reverse flow for a sec. So this should, you know, I blew on it and uh, I guess we're going to test it. I, I should probably see if this is going to make a whistle because I remember I used a PCV valve at one point in a very you know similar kind of idea and it whistled like crazy so we'll see what this does hopefully it works i when i was blowing on it you could actually get a fair bit of flow through it so it should it shouldn't restrict the flow at all but uh yeah let's start it up see if it leaks at all i noticed that you know even though i said a half inch this isn't really a half inch uh and i don't think this fuel i think this fuel line is some sort of other measurement because it's pretty big too so i had to i had to clamp it down like crazy uh, I don't think that's going anywhere, but yeah, we'll have to see. <laughs> hey, got the check valve in there. Just fired it up just to test it, just to make sure there's no leaks. But yeah, so the benefit of running the check valve over something like this is, for my setup, 
the only vacuum we're pulling on the crankcase is on our stock PCV here and here and we're only pulling it through the pump right our manifold vacuum is blocked off so when I go wide open throttle the vacuum that is created from the intake right the venture so the air pulling past this opening will start to create a vacuum as it increases but on my setup I don't want that because that vacuum will only be fighting our pump so the check valve what's what it's gonna do is when this vacuum is greater than our pump vacuum it's gonna shut that valve and that way we're not fighting our pump so this should be, I'm gonna go for a test drive now and just kinda of see how it feels, but um, yeah, this should completely eliminate any oil going into the intake. Okay, so I've already done this and, and, and actually fixed my issue. Um, I gotta do more testing to make sure it's completely done, but I noticed that after doing the check valve and changing a few other things, that when I would start to lean into it on like a lower gear, like selected gear, that it would start to kinda of have that same feeling where the throttle body doesn't feel like it's opening that could be a failing throttle body it was used when i bought it um i have no idea but um i wanted to show a procedure that maybe some of you guys might not know it um it's absolutely crucial if you're going to be messing with stuff like intake exhaust um so this is the throttle body relearn procedure let's wait for the truck to go past okay so you got your key uh off you're gonna go to the on position and you're gonna count to three and then you're going to press the pedal all the way down five times like quickly like one two three four five and then as soon as your fifth one is done you're gonna count to seven and at that time um, you're going to put the pedal all the way down and roughly 10 seconds but I don't count I just wait until the check engine light starts blinking and when that stops blinking you turn the key to off and then you turn it the engine on and it will basically there's a certain parameter of uh idle speed and it goes to the backs so you're around a thousand rpm and you'll see the rpm slowly go back down to to spec and what that does is it relearns where the throttle body is supposed to be so let's do it so we're gonna go to on one two three one two three four five one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way down. And then if I did this properly, the check engine light should start blinking. And when that stops blinking, I'm just kind of hoping, yeah, there it goes. Uh, so when that stops blinking, we're gonna release the pedal. So my foot's all the way down right now. So it's gonna stop blinking and I'm gonna lift. Done, so I'm off. We turn it off and then we turn it on and fire see how it's kind of around a thousand that's going to slowly come down to i think spec is 550 600 but yeah right around there you'll kind of feel it too it'll kind of like level out and you know i have the wide band to show me you know where we're at what it's doing but um hey look my uh my VDC sensor is just fucking, <laughs> it just went off. <laughs> I took the sensor out earlier and cleaned it off, but uh, the check engine light hadn't gone away yet, so two for one. Uh, in the factory service manual, it says that if it isn't at um, 600 to give it some light revs. I do that anyways. I just, I just kind of, you know, slowly raise it up. I've got it so sensitive now. As soon as I literally less than a millimeter of throttle and it starts to move the RPMs. So it's really sensitive now. Like, there we go. So I'll just kind of just kind of do this a few times and let it fall. And I'll just kind of hold it there. You'll actually see the RPM. Yeah, it's it's going down. So that is I would consider that factory spec. Yeah, at idle because when we put into gear, right? Let's put into gear now. Yeah, that's perfect. That's exactly where you want it. So then from there, I would turn off VDC. That's awesome, that, that uh, check engine light just disappeared. Um, and then I'll go do some light driving. So basically just regular driving, 
Um, stuff around, you know, 30% throttle max, you know, no real ripping it, and uh, just let it relearn everything, and that should have your idle perfect. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so just came back from a short test drive, and everything feels really good. Um, that throttle issue did come back, um, even after adjusting the throttle cable, but after doing the relearn procedure, everything's back to normal. So yeah, if you are going to adjust your throttle cable, just remember to do the relearn procedure afterwards. The one-way check valve works great, no issues there, so pretty happy about that. If you're going to do a catch can, I, I highly recommend using one of these. But that's going to that's gonna do it for this video, boys. I really appreciate all the likes and all the subs, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.